In this video, I will provide you with another way to use a water level and some stakes, some type of um, wood. You can even use a full length 8 foot 2 by 4, 10 foot 2 by 4, something like that. And you can even attach it to the building if it's not going to create a problem. And of course, we are going to be using a water level. So here I have a five foot long stake and you can just simply drive it into the ground and you're probably not going to be able to drive it into the ground right next to the building because the footing usually protrudes out past the finished footing wall here and who knows how far it can be protruding out. So basically what you're going to be doing is using a stake as a reference and if you need to you can always install some braces something going down at a 45 degree angle in both directions going this way and this way and you can secure those stakes where you have either an outside or an inside corner and you don't have a concrete patio or a walkway that could be creating a problem and if you need some more tips let me know in the comment area by providing me with a description of what you are dealing with if you can't drive a stake into the ground or fasten a piece of wood to the building then you're just simply going to grab your water level and make a few marks and you're probably going to need another person for something like this however i have actually just taken a screw and screwed the piping to the stake or the building and then once it is positioned at both ends i can go ahead and make a mark on the stake at both ends i'm going to make a mark here and a mark over here and as long as there are not any air bubbles in the piping then you are going to have an extremely accurate level mark and i know this method is outdated you can get laser levels if you can then it would be obvious that you're not going to need this idea and the laser levels are a lot better from when i first started working where they might have needed to be calibrated a little more often than they do today. And then we're just simply going to move our water level over to the next side. And if our water level is not long enough, we can always drive a stake in between or use multiple stakes and just simply mark those stakes until you get to the other side. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to place a mark on the building just in case the stakes move. So just a simple small mark on the building should be fine. And then you're going to use that mark to measure either to the bottom or the top so that you can calculate whether or not the building is sagging or out of level. Or, for example, might have been raised at one end. Another thing I like to do is run a string around the building. And if you do this, there's a good chance the stakes are going to need to be braced, like I suggested, in both directions. And then you'll simply go around the building. And then you'll be able to use the string if you need to check other parts of, for example, a long wall to see if there's any movement there. So not too difficult. I say not too difficult, but this really is a rather inexpensive way to give you a rough idea sometimes. Sometimes you're going to get an exact idea of just what type of damage you might be dealing with. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at where we might be measuring from after we've made our mark. And you can see here where we can measure from the bottom to the mark that we've made as long as the siding, stucco, or brick, whatever you're dealing with, has been installed in the same spot all the way around the house. So that's why you might choose this method. This is actually what I would do. I would measure from here to something over here preferably on a straight line here. And I've done this before where I've taken the tongue of the tape measure and stuck it up here, just kind of shoved it as far as it would go in the crevice underneath the roof rafter and then measured the distance. Another thing I've done before is measured from the corner of the block or made a mark on the roof rafter. I just wouldn't recommend going very far out just in case the overhang is sagging. So again, I think the best method here would be to measure from this point here, if you can, to this point. And in part two of the video, I will show you how to make a water level and how you might be able to use it. 
You will need to start with some clear plastic tubing and then that will need to be filled up with water to make your water level. So let's go ahead and get a garden hose going here and simply insert the tubing into the hose or wrap the wrap your hand around it somehow to get the water pumping in there. And you will see all of the air bubbles flowing through there. Plenty of air bubbles. We do not want air bubbles in our water level. So after you get a little bit of water in the bucket, wouldn't be a bad idea to submerge it into the bucket. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't be. You can grab both ends there. And you can see water coming out. But you're gonna you're going to want to submerge the hose and the tubing in the water uh, to make sure that no air is getting in. Sometimes if you just hold it together, you're going to get air sucked in there. But if you put it under the water, good chance no air is going to get in there. I'm looking for the other end of the tube right now to show you. There we go. Plenty of water. No air bubbles coming out of there. Now we can get started with our temporary uh, setup there. If you pull out one end of the tubing, the water is going to just continue to leak back into the bucket. So stick that back in there to get the water back in it and then grab both ends together and try and keep them even or level, however we look at it there and then we will attach it to whatever we are going to level and in this case it is just going to be our temporary setup so i have it tied on with a string i'm going to make a mark where the water is uh, even or you can see it right there in the tubing and then i'm going to mark the other side You can see it really get a good view of it right there where the water is. And this would be level. And when I say level, I would imagine water is level, you have to imagine. If we go around the planet Earth, it's not going to be as level as it would be just a few feet away like we're working on here. But all you need to do now is simply measure. You can see there we're about an inch and three eighths. And again, I don't know how flat this board is. It uh, looks like a rough sawn piece of lumber. I should have used a smooth one. There were a little bit over an inch and a half, uh, just in between an inch and a half and an uh, inch and three eighths. But if you're going to level a floor, simply measure down. And you can see here we're about 32 and three quarters, just a little bit under 32 and three quarters. Measure the other side. There's the star of our show, a little uh, hoodlum that came in the neighborhood. And then uh, you can see here we're a little bit under 32 and 3 quarters also. So this is even Steven. If we look at this right here, we are right on the money. And that is how a water level works. Now, what if I measured it and it was off a little bit? Um, let's say that the measurement on the right was 30 inches and the measurement on the left was 31 inches. This would represent a sloping direction towards the larger number. The 31 inch number would represent something deeper. And the so the bigger number would represent something lower. The smaller number would represent something higher according to the way I'm measuring it. If you change directions and you measure up, then you will have to reverse those numbers. But uh, for down, uh, if you're measuring down like this, then that should work out just fine. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.